I am now creating weekly exclusive content for Patreon, so if you are interested in that, go check out the link down below. And of course, if you want to avoid the random lottery of FIFA points, you want to go straight to the source, buy the players directly, use u7buy.com and use the code TVM at checkout. What is going on guys, Tivium here, welcome back to another player review. Today we have the 93 rated Divock Origi. Wijnaldum went out this morning, if you want to go check that out feel free to do so. Divock Origi, even cheaper than that Wijnaldum card, coming in at around 100k there or thereabouts. So of course, unbelievably easy to grind these cards right now because of the 85 to 92, the 88, rate, 88 rated plus packs as well. 88, yeah, 80, that's right, the 5 88 rated cards. The, there's been two of those, so if you've done one, and then of course you have five 88 rated cards that you can put into this. It does seem a little bit overkill to put like an 88 rated plus card into an 82 rated SBC, but it's actually cheaper to do that right now than to buy a full squad of 82s. So, with that being said, uh, if you're a Liverpool fan, you love this. If you're not a Liverpool fan, to be honest, Wijnaldum, you can you can enjoy and like. I think Origi is going to be one of those players that uh, unfortunately... Not many people outside of Liverpool fans really will even try because he's just one of those cards that on paper, you know, it's not a bad card. It just doesn't look like it would fit the game that well or well enough to go and spend 100,000 coins on knowing that you probably won't keep it beyond maybe a couple of games or just end up doing it and throwing it straight into an SBC. Four star, four star, uh, high medium, which is nice. High and average body type. Of course, he's six foot two. So he does have... A little bit of height to him. And in the 6pm video yesterday, I mentioned that he reminded me of Mason Greenwood's Future Stars card a little bit. Because they are quite similar in, in sort of the agility, balance, acceleration and the height. So they're both 6'2". They both, I think, got high medium work rates. And then, of course, you've got the... The, the Agility 88, which is the same. And then the balance is... I mean, the balance, to be fair, on Origi is lower. And then the acceleration is roughly the same as well. So, theoretically, they should feel very similar. I will tell you that Divock Origi feels a little bit... Not, not chunkier, that's the wrong word. But just a little bit bigger. But he has more strength. Divock Origi is a very, very powerful player who is able to hold up the ball very, very well in this game by using shield. So, with that... Uh, we've got 97 sprint speed, which is, you know, it's nice. It would be nice if it was the other way around. 97 acceleration, 89 sprint speed would be better than the other way around because, of course, you, you feel that that boost of, of pace and acceleration more from the acceleration than you do from the overall sprint speed because not many people play that high a line it's highly unlikely that you'll play a ball over the top and you'll be able to use that sprint speed by pulling away from the defender. And to be honest, I think maybe once in the, I don't know, seven or eight games that I've played so far uh, that I've managed to, you know, feel that sort of right and pulling away from the defender now that the sprint speed's kicked in ahead of the acceleration. You've got 91 finishing, 95 shot power, 92 positioning, 93 short passing, uh, 96 strength, decent physicals for the rest of it, and then of course 99 heading, although I think the first clip is Divock Origi missing an absolute sitter with his head. The team I've got him in is my full Liverpool past and present squad. It's mainly present with Yari Lippmann and Ian Rush in there, just sort of making up the numbers really. I mean... Jordan Henderson can and will be upgraded. No Van Dyke at the moment. Uh, maybe we don't even put uh, Jordan Henderson's team the season card in there. Maybe we just go straight for Van Dyke and then use 92 Fabinho. But to be honest, that team plays very well. Uh, I didn't lose a single game with that team, which I don't know whether that's a, a sign of how good the team is, how good I am, or how how bad the people I played uh, were on the day, but either way, it was played across two different days, I didn't lose a single game, Divock Origi should have scored that, there was absolutely no excuses, and I don't know why he didn't, he is a very, well I would say very, but he is an inconsistent player, that is for sure, so what I mean by that is his finishing, some goals absolutely rifles them in, unreal finish, and then next time he's one on one with a goalkeeper, and he completely fluffs it, and I don't really know why. His positioning is very good. As you can see there, he arrived late into the six-yard area, managed to get his left foot, which is, of course, his weak foot on the ball, and he wraps it into the goal. I mean, it's quite difficult to miss from six yards out, sure, but still, you know, you have to be in the right place at the right time. You have to put the ball in the back of the net. I played him at right wing for 
maybe 95% of the games. Good drag back there. We did score in the end. But uh, I played him right wing. Uh, I don't really know why I did. I, I, I sort of... The first game, I put him out there and I've got... I had two settings, right? Or two um, tactics. The first of which was to have him out on the right side in a 4-2-3-1 Ian Rush up front. The second one was to have a Rigi up front and then Rush out on the right-hand side. And I started with the... I was sort of more focused on Wijnaldum first, so I didn't really pay too much attention to where Divock Origi was. And I put him out on the right side. Look at this for a finish from Ian Rush. Brilliant goal. Uh, I had, yeah, Origi on the right side. And the more I kept him there, the more he sort of got involved and he was he was really helping me out. Some of the... Um, some of the things he was doing. This is an evidence or like a small piece of evidence of his strength. I couldn't quite get the shot off properly because he was being um, hassled by the defender. But he just couldn't lose the ball even if he tried. And then some goals like that. It's not the only goal like that he scores as well. There is one coming up in a second where he flicks it past his opponent and just smashes it in the back of the net. He again in the air here wins the header and it's just not accurate. I don't know why. But his heading for me just wasn't that great. I mean, heading in the game in general isn't that great, right? But still, very frustrating stuff. He's in a goal here, and he should have scored, and he just didn't. And there's a small inconsistency because he misses that, but then the next two shots he has, he scores both of them. Uh, we get Firmino back to Vinicius Jr. on as a sub. Little flick past the defender, and bang, doesn't, doesn't miss. That is a cracking finish. And the next... I don't know if the next clip... I think the next clip is a goal, and the clip after that maybe is a miss, but... Um, the next goal he scores is uh, it would be one that it would be harder to miss than it would be to score. But still, there is definitely an inconsistency for me in front of goal. You can't rely on his finishing, that's for sure, which is a little bit irritating at times. You know, you wish you wish you'd really be able to, you know, score a lot of goals with him. And it's not to say that he can't score a lot of goals, but you'll be missing a lot of chances as well. And that is the unfortunate thing with him. So that's one of the reasons why playing him out on the wide right area worked better for me than it did playing him as a striker because like I said in this game for instance he's playing as a striker and it's not that he was bad because he manages to do really well there beats his man left footed finish across the keeper they're not that likely to go in but you know in, in theory he should be hitting the target surely so I've marked him down slightly I don't think it's a quote-unquote meta card and the reason for that is because of his height it's also because of the agility and the balance I just don't really think you can say that this card is a quote-unquote meta card. It, not to say that he's not usable, because he really is a nice, enjoyable card. If you're a Liverpool fan in particular, you will forgive his his shortcomings, and you will say, yeah, do you know what? I enjoyed myself. If you're not a Liverpool fan, and you're looking for an, like a quality card that's going to improve your team, I would probably stay clear. Like It's not a card that is going to annoy you that much. He's not really a player that's that bad. It's just that there are better cards out there. He has slight inconsistencies here or there. And it's just something worth noting, really, more than anything else. Now, in terms of potential like traits, unfortunately, he has flair trait. If he had outside of the weak foot, weak, weak foot, weak foot trait, I would be sat here a much happier man because I feel like the inconsistencies, especially on the weaker foot, would be eliminated because he would then potentially go for goal with the outside of the right foot. The shot where, right at the end of the clips where I took it across goal, I probably would have gone near post. The reason I didn't go near post this time is because I just didn't trust the accuracy of the left foot because it was such a narrow angle to go for that near post because the goalkeeper was there marked as well. Even though it's an overpowered shot, you'd still need to have great accuracy to be able to hit that near post. So going across goal with the larger area was just seemed a little bit more logical. Time again, maybe I would have gone near post. But outside of the foot shot, I think I would have scored. But we'll have to just, I don't know, guess, assume, chalk it down to experience and not do it again. I was building on the road to glory a past and present of sorts Liverpool team. So the fact that they released Wijnaldum and Divock Origi on the same day was an absolute blessing. The fact that it happened on my birthday as well was just unreal. So I was very happy about that. On the day that Liverpool won in real life as well, it was just a great day. And if you're a Liverpool fan, you will love this card. You'll get on with it. Wijnaldum the same and any other Liverpool card that they drop, I'm sure that you'll be all over it. But it's different with Wijnaldum. Spoiler alert for that review. That is a great card, no matter who you support. He is one of the better box-to-box -box players in the game. He's just so, so good, especially with the chem style. Divock Origi has his plus points, inconsistency, balance, long shots. Definitely not uh, part of the positives. And I would say... 
based on that, it's not a player that will improve your team, but it's someone that you can use, hold up the ball, have a bit of fun with, and in particular, if you are a fan. Now, with that being said, if you have enjoyed today's review, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for new, and until the next time, goodbye. Football Index, the game changed. Download the app now.